There's no doubt that J.D. Vance is a skilled debater, that he's able to put a friendly face on Donald Trump's dangerous, extreme, draconian agenda. Tuesday's debate was a testament to exactly that, and Vance nearly escaped unscathed, having gotten through about an hour and a half of the debate before he was faced with one simple question that changed the tone of the entire evening. This is one that we are miles apart on. This was a threat to our democracy in a way that we had not seen. And it manifested itself because of Donald Trump's inability to say. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non-answer. With that moment, a mere 25 seconds among an otherwise relatively unsuccessful, almost two hour long debate, it became clear exactly what J.D. Vance represents. He is an empty vessel for Trumpism. The same brand of chaos, of dysfunction, of lies that was so thoroughly rejected by the voters in 2020 was repackaged and presented yet again to the American people. Although if you didn't want election denialism before, I doubt you're gonna want it now. What it also made clear is that, like the rest of the GOP, J.D. Vance was performing for an audience of one. Think about that for a moment. This guy isn't interested in speaking to Americans or making his pitch to the rest of the country. He is focused on not attracting the ire of one man. Per usual, everything that the Republican Party does is to get in or stay in the good graces of the God King. And so think about what that would mean in practice. If Trump and Vance win in November, who would they be there to serve? Would they be there to lower costs and add jobs and to expand healthcare for you? Or would they be there to settle scores for Trump, to consolidate power for Trump, to expand the wealth of Trump? What J.D. Vance did on that stage was to offer a preview of how he would govern this country, not in the best interest of Americans, but rather what's in the best interest of just one man with a fragile ego who demands total fealty. And what's worse, it didn't even pay off for Vance. Far from it, it actually backfired on him. Not only on the debate stage when Wall said this. Look, when Mike Pence made that decision to certify that election, that's why Mike Pence isn't on this stage. What I'm concerned about is, where is the firewall with Donald Trump? Where is the firewall if he knows he could do anything, including taking an election, and his vice president's not going to stand to it? That's what we're asking you, America. Will you stand up? Will you keep your oath of office, even if the president doesn't? And I think Kamala Harris would agree. She wouldn't have picked me if she didn't think I would do that, because, of course, that's what we would do. So, America, I think you've got a really clear choice on this election of who's going to honor that democracy and who's going to honor Donald Trump. But also in the aftermath of the debate, as showcased by this NBC focus group. If you were going to say who won the night, I would say that, that, that Tim Walz won. Um, I wonder, would everybody say that Walls won this debate? A show of hands. No pressure. Okay. Not sure, Claire. And this CNN focus group as well. I'm going to be voting for Kamala Harris. You know, uh, one of the stark sort of aspects of that debate that really stuck with me was when they were talking about January 6th and how Mike Pence certified the election and they were wondering if J.D. Vance would certify the election should Trump lose. And, you know, J.D. Vance didn't really give us a definitive answer and I, I'm disappointed in that fact. And I don't think that I can trust someone, you know, with my vote if they're not going to respect it. In fact, MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell called it the moment that reshuffled everything. That was a moment that was coming all night, and I, I don't know if Tim Walz deliberately held it to that and waited uh, for it to get to that point, but it, it really was the moment that, that kind of reshuffled everything, as, as Nicole says, everything that you thought you had heard in the last uh, 88 minutes or so changed in a way that was very, very, very clear, uh, that there's one person here who is actually capable of dealing with reality, and there's this other person who will say anything whatever is necessary to say to get through to th thread the Trump needle to get where he has to be on whatever the question is. The fact is that it may not have been a big part of the debate and it may have come late, but that doesn't change the impact. There is a reason that everyone's focused on that one moment. It's because it effectively proves that everything else Vance said was a facade to cover for the same tired bend of Trumpism that his running mate has been trying to shove down our throats for years. Is Vance more articulate? Yes. Is he more measured? Yes. Is he smoother? Yes. But is there any daylight between what Trump would do in office and what Vance would do? 
Not in the slightest. What you get with Vance is a carbon copy of Trump himself, a chameleon that appears perfectly willing to sell every ounce of his dignity and integrity down the river if it means he can get an inch closer to power. That seems to be a hallmark of today's GOP. So the Republicans might have been momentarily successful in disguising their heinous policy platform, but the mask eventually came off. What Vance did on that stage is little more than wrap a turd in tinfoil. And just like Americans have rejected Trumpism in 2018 and 2020 and 2022 and 2023, they're smart enough to recognize what they're being sold and they're not looking to buy it. Before you go, to see more content from MSNBC, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking the link right here on this screen. And you can also follow the link to see some exclusive content only on TikTok.